What? I'm just using my new billet file. All right, what the heck is up guys? Welcome back to the garage. Today we have something super cool. We're gonna let the Cummins hang out for just a little bit. Today, we are back on my truck back there, the 2017 Ford F-250 6.7 Power Stroke. And what I have today is something super cool. So now this here is not a wood file or a cheese grater or anything of the sort. This happens to be a simple yet crucial modification for your 6.7 Power Stroke if you are running a crankcase reroute kit. Now this can be any kit on the market. It doesn't have to be SPE. It could be any kit in the game. This is a must have. So real quick, a crankcase vent on the 6.7 Power Stroke, um, there, is, there is crankcase pressure. With your pistons in there going up and down, that creates a small amount of pressure that builds in your crankcase, your bottom end. So that has to go somewhere. So the 6.7 Power Stroke has its own channel that comes up through the driver's side cylinder head and it escapes through a port, which then goes into this big weird box thing that tries to separate the oil from the air. And then the air goes back into the front of the turbo, um, but it's oil soaked air, it's all crappy. I've done the whole deal with my truck. I've done a video on my truck taking that apart and seeing how much oil actually went in there, which is a ton. And anyone out there that says that that oil lubes your turbo, Fake news. So there's a couple kits on the market that reroute the crankcase vent to the atmosphere. And most of those kits on the market have a Venturi fitting, which is a little cone-shaped cap that goes on the on the hole that the crankcase vent comes out, meaning that the oil-soaked air most likely will hit that little cone and the oil will remain there, only letting the actual air and the gas escape, not physical liquid. Now with my truck here, I rarely ever have an oil drip but it seems that if I idle the truck a lot, like if I'm sitting idle for um, a, like a prolonged period of time, I am gonna drip some oil. I'll shut the truck off, I'll leave, I'll come back to the truck several hours later and there will be a drip, a tiny little tiny drip mark underneath of where I have my crankcase vent routed out on the side below my driver's side door. But I could run the truck all day long, absolutely wide open throttle pulling a heavy gooseneck trailer and never have any oil come out. It's crazy, it kinda only happens on idle. So, so the mad scientist Dan came up with this little apparatus, this little cheese grater action here. Um, so this goes down in the hole on the driver's side valve cover where the crankcase vent hole is. It fits nice and snug down in there. I'll, I'll put a couple, I'll, I'll overlay a couple pictures here. And how this works is the gases have to travel through this cheese grater thing here, have to travel through there, and then also up through here to escape. So if you were to cut open a catch can, you're gonna see baffle type things just like this. There should be multiple layers. Some of them have multiple layers of baffles that are stacked through that the gas and the air and the oil has to pass through before it will escape through the through like a filter that'll go on top of the catch can or reroute back into the engine or whatever, vent somewhere. So basically this thing slips right down into that hole on the valve cover and it acts as a internal catch can, which is absolutely killer and it should solve the oil drippage problem 100%. As you can see, this is uh, angled and chamfered right here to allow oil to seep back down through if any were to escape through here. Um, and then also it has a little chamfered slot on the bottom here to allow any oil that's sitting you know, on here to run back down and it'll run through this little chamfered spot and go back into the engine. And that'll all take place after you shut off your truck and there's no more pressure pushing on this from the crankcase. So, um, and included with the kit, you are you have uh, super simple directions. It's very, very self-explanatory. You lift off the Venturi fitting that goes on top of the hole. You lift that off. You slip this down into the hole. You put the Venturi fitting back on with your CCV reroute hose already attached if you already are running a CCV reroute kit. You are supplied with longer bolts because obviously this is thicker, you're adding this much of a distance um, on the action. And then oh, before you put this on, you have to put your O-ring. So you are supplied a new O-ring and longer bolts. Here is a detailed picture on the directions. All right guys, so I went through and already popped the two bolts out of the uh, CCV kit already. Um, so you can see back there we have uh, where the hose connects to the fitting um, and that is the port for the CCV gas to escape from. So how the CCV reroute setup is, is the hose goes up over the brake booster um, 
Now you can route this kind of, you know, whichever way you want. You can do a longer hose uh, running out the back, running into the exhaust. You know, you can kind of go however you want to go about this. Uh, me, I just kept the, the basic hose that was included with the kit. It comes off of that fitting, goes up over the brake booster, uh, runs down behind the fender here, and ends up right on the back of the control arm thing where it bolts to the frame, you can see all of the old uh, soot and oil. Now what I did before this was I uh, I idled the truck for a while to, to really test the whole idle theory and this is what I am left with. Um, you can see that it hasn't like really dripped yet, but it is about to drip right there. Um, and then this whole area is kind of just soaking wet with old oil fumes, basically just all kind of oil. So with that internal catch can that should virtually eliminate that um and like i said it doesn't normally do that it only does that when i idle the truck i can hammer the truck wide open throttle to go do drag race whatever and it doesn't do that only when idling all right so installing this is super easy you just kind of move the old fitting out of the way um, drop it down in you just have to triple check to make sure you put your o-ring in um, i'm real good at installing things and not having the o-ring in um, so then i gotta pull it back out so super easy drop the catch can in put your top piece back on two bolts go in tighten it and you're done you can see now that it's like double the height so you definitely want to use the supplied bolts old ones will be too short see the old buildup of all the oil soot that was kind of gathering back here um, wiped it off a little bit just so it wasn't like sopping wet because um, now I'm gonna idle the truck a little and we're gonna see if any uh, oil actually comes out through that hose but but after seeing that whole baffle thing I don't think any oil is gonna make it past there especially because it has to go through that and the Venturi fitting um, and then come out of the hose all right, guys, I'm going to let it idle for a little, um, and then we'll go back over it, make sure it's sealed, nothing's leaking, and uh, we should be good to go. All right, guys, uh, let it idle for a while. Whoa, I don't have the brakes locked on this thing. <laughs> we got no leaks up top. Everything's sealed up there, looking really clean. Um, I mean, I wasn't worried about that. I was pretty sure I had the, the O-rings installed right. We got no drippage. Clean. So that's super cool. I am uh, really pumped on this thing. If you guys are running a CCV reroute, this is a, this is a must. Um, I've seen a couple comments floating around um, asking me personal questions on if I've ever had oil drip out of there. The answer to that is yes. Um, like I went through in the beginning of this video when I idle the truck for a long period of time, there's a tiny little oil spot that will uh, just drip out of that hose. Um, truck's probably been off since I idled it for maybe like 20 minutes, so um, I think that's plenty of time for the oil to come down that hose and drip out onto the ground. So, super pumped, really easy install. If you guys want to get one of these for your truck, you can hit the first link in the description. Um, they are in stock, ready to ship. Um, the stock on these things go like super fast. So if you want one, don't hesitate, get one now. Because all these little parts for the 6.7 Power Stroke are literally like flying out of the door. It's insane. Um, there's just a lot of interest in the 6.7 Power Stroke platform. That's a good thing. Oh yeah, guys. So we have a weird oil furnace thing in the shop here. Um, I wasn't going to go oil furnace because that's just like not really the most practical way. And I don't want to buy oil. Um, I have a lot of access to firewood. So what did we end up doing was getting this crispy, it's not brand new, but it's new-ish, big old wood burner. I'm pumped. This is awesome. So the shop's going to be nice and toasty when the colder weather hits. Um, I just have to finish piping in the uh, stack. But all right, guys, that's it. If you made it this far, hit that subscribe button, join the family. We have officially installed the internal catch can on the truck. I've had this on hand for quite a while, but I've been messing with the old Cummins out there. Hold on. Pumped. Pumped on the Cummins. So yeah, I've been messing, whoa. So yeah, I've been messing with the Cummins and uh, haven't had a chance to install the internal catch can. So now, no more oil drips. We're ready to roll.